Tell me your name. Don Chester Johnson. And where were you born, Mr. Johnson? Dakota County, Albany, Georgia. Okay. Uh, February 13, 1942. Okay. Now, and um, tell me who your parents were. My parents, my dad was Cherry Curtis Johnson. My mother was Lucia Davis Johnson. Okay, and what did they do for a living? My dad was just a regular contractor. Uh, you know, he did uh, odds and ends. He was just a laborer. My mm -hmm. mama was a school teacher. How many siblings did you have? It was three of us. Two boys, uh, three boys. Okay. Now, and what are your first memories of life here in uh, Dougherty County? I was born here. Uh, my memory of first grade, I ran in 1947. You know, really good memories. Where did you go to school at? Hazard Elementary. Okay. Now, did you finish and go all the way through Hazard? I went all the way through. Okay, and what are what are some of your memories from that time period? That we were the school that Albany State used for their training of their teachers. They were their students, you know, there, and we was the elite school in Albany at the time because everybody used to tease us about being the, all the rich kids over. That wasn't true, but we was had was exposed to more stuff than the kids in other schools in school. For example, I never forget that we was taught how to use knife, fork, spoons, teaspoon, uh, what butter knife was, what a saucer and cup was for, and what side the table was set, how to set the table. We was taught this by the college because we was strictly college affiliated. Okay. And this is the thing I remember about going to Hallett that was education because we had a, we had a little. Uh, I don't know what we call it, a band that had little chimes and stuff that we did. I, I can think what they called it at that time. Because it got me going back a long time. And Hazard was a school that you was taught your mannerism, respect, and how to handle people, I want to say. You know, in other words, at that time, when we said something that's racial, that you taught your place where, you know, you didn't go on the hill, you didn't go there. And Hazel was good at bringing you up under the old Annabella Brew. Okay. Now, since you went to the school that was connected to um, what was the normal school, the college at the time, uh -huh. was that what you would call a protective kind of sheltered childhood? No, it wasn't. No, you were not protect. This wasn't protected child. Your parents protected. I grew uh -huh. up in a protected child because of my parents. Okay. But I learned later that I, I wasn't exposed to a lot of stuff because of my mother by her being okay. a school teacher. And give me an example of some of the sh sheltering that she did to protect you from the segregationist South and its system of Jim Crow. Oh, she just took me by hand, just led me around. Told me what to do and what not to do, and, you know, because she always said that she thought I was going to get killed because I didn't like white. I hope I didn't say that. Wrong. No, you tell tell history like, you know, is what it she is. She said that she she no thought I didn't like white folks. <laughs> it wasn't that I didn't like white folks. I didn't like what white folks did. Give you a typical example that started me as an early child since you said that. In my neighborhood, I used to walk by a school, and still there. That was an elementary school, and I knew some white kids that we played together, but we had to leave at the same time, we couldn't be together. And they went to that school, and I kept asking my mama why we, I couldn't go to that school. We walk, I walked by the school every day, and that kind of hurt me. And then when I got to the eighth grade, seventh grade, I got a book with this particular child name in it that I knew was white, and it was passing down stuff to us. And then all of a sudden they built Auburn High, so I, I knew I was going to Auburn High. And we found out, no, I wasn't either. And they had stuff that we didn't have at Monroe. And this was the thing that kind of got me on it against white folks. So what, at they, age 12 or 13, you kind of had to wake up? No, I had a wiggle call around eight, nine, or ten. Okay, eight, tell me about that experience. That's what I'm saying about me passing that school. Okay, out. okay. That was and then they would they would do something that 
I didn't take all that. They were riding the bus and they would come by and throw stuff out of the spit at us on the bus on their way to school and call us those names that you know we're not supposed to use them words no more. I was with her, I was somebody that I was like, with my mama, I don't know why. Uh, Cause I had a baby brother then. Anyway, we went to a supermarket over in East Lumber called Roy Supermarket. And I was there walking on there with her because she always shopping by the meat. went to the meat department. So she was going through the meat department and looking at the meats. And she kind of, I kind of stood there where she went away from me. And I'm just standing there looking like I'm looking at you. This big white guy come across the counter. Said, boy, can I help you or anything I can do with you? And that's the first time I revealed. I looked at him. I said, you can't do a damn thing for me. And the other guy that was standing there, he turned red. And he, I think he would have come from that kind of at me if the other guy hadn't been standing there. And he looked at the other guy. The other guy looked at him. And the other guy kind of laughed. And I think he told him, that, that boy told you something. Didn't he? And... Mama came back when Mama knew something had happened. Mama came back. <laughs> Mama came back. Mama said, "What you do?" I said nothing. And <laughs> she knew I had said something. But she didn't know what I said. And she, she when Mama got out, I said, "You have to do something to that crack." That crack turned red. I said, "Mama, I said, he had me. Uh, could he help me uh, do anything for me?" But the way he said it, I told him he could do it. Down there. Mama said, "Oh." I said, my child going to get killed. <laughs> White folks going to kill my child. Well, that was the first time I rebelled. Well, that was the only time I rebelled. I said, when I went to do my demonstration. And then once, once I got involved in it, an incident had happened with me. The and that was by my old man being what he were, and my mom and teaching. It was an incident happened with me. I had a car, and I picked up these students from uh, Temple University. It was all white. They come down to help us, march the demonstrate and show us, and, and vote the registration to show us what to do. As long as those kids were in my car, the police, they took, well, they followed me. They followed me all over town with a bus. And I never know why they, I, I know why they busted the kids got the car, because I had six of them in the car. And they followed me. We was talking, we were talking. And one of the guys told me, say, uh, you need to let us out because they're going to follow you all over the town on in this car because they want to arrest us. And I was thinking anything about it. I said, well, where y'all want to go? They said, we want to go to this place you call Hall of Home Project so we can arrest the people and get the arrested them all. So I didn't show up. They were following me, following me, following me, following me, following me. They were stopped. I got there and I stopped. When I stopped, they surrounded the car. It was a bus and the police, police bus. They, they still got the bus. Uh -huh. It was a police bus and the uh, thing. But anyway, when we got to Holly Home Private, they surrounded my car. The police did. And I got out first. I told the kids to sit there. I got out first. So I just knew I was going to get arrested. So I put my hand on top of the car. They didn't even bother me. They said nothing to me. They never, they never touched me. They never said a word to me. They stood there. They just stood there. Just patient. And so this guy, whoever he was, he was a white guy. Never, never forget him. He, he must have been the leader, team leader. He said, we going to have to get on our hand, take our chances. And he said, I'm getting out first. And when he got out, the passion aside of the door, they grabbed him. And when they grabbed him, they hit him. And they throwed him on that bus. And I went to move around to him. And these two big old white guys stepped in front of me and blocked me. They didn't put their hands on nothing. They just blocked me. And that I knew then, that's about that love behavior, that I wasn't supposed to go because something was happen like try to go. So I didn't go. I backed off. And everyone that come out that car, they went to walk, got in the car, they snatched them and hit them and throw them in the bus. All six of them. Called in and told to leave the campus. Wow. So we came back to school the next day. Because we did it after all of us out of school, I think. Something like 3 o'clock, something in the evening. Was it thanks, Thanksgiving break? I can't remember. Was it breaking up? Yeah, I, I know. I, it had to be somewhere around because we, 
Black we didn't come Black back. Black so it had to had be, because they called us in and told us to get off the campus because we were all were suspended. And they called us by name, told us who they were. And so we all did nothing. I, I, I don't know what I was driving or walking in, but anyway, I'm not even driving because I, I, I left. And what, what I felt was that I thought they did us wrong. So, Mama, either, we have a telephone on the run, but Mama either came down to try to get my records to transfer me. And all of a sudden, the records was not available. I didn't say they were lost or stolen or that, but they was not available. Whatever that means. Whatever that meant. <laughs> but then, uh, later on, I found out that Annette and all them was, record was transferred. And the second quarter, I was called in, I wrote a letter, and I was called in, Mom told me to go down to see you know, I was called in. Oh, I know, but it had to be. It had to be, because I was not too close, it had to be, like you said, it had to be Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Um, 61. One. It had to be Thanksgiving, 61, mm -hmm. because I missed that quarter, and the next quarter, cost that fall quarter, we was due back in for the band football thing. So when that quarter came up, I was called in and told me that I was reinstated back in school and to be at the band field to see uh, Mr. Marshall then for band practice. And it was in August. August. Because like I said, I didn't realize I was as popular as I were because they didn't want to, the band started up without me being out there for the public to come. Open the state, they were small now, they were small. The thing that they should uh, take in consideration is where they are now. They wouldn't be here with the advantage of not knowing what black and white is. You know what I'm saying? By going to places where you had to go, there was a black section and a white section. We eliminated that problem with them of segregation, not being able to date a white person or something. We eliminated all that. that, that they should take into consideration the struggle that we went through and died for them to be in the spot that they are in now. Well, they have no idea, an uh, earth idea, of what black uh, segregation is. They don't even know what came for see what segregation is. See, this is what we took away for them to be able to understand and look at what the fight that we go through. They need to go back and check the documentaries and see what we went through to make it very convenient for them today. And basically, it really, only thing that happened was it was covered up, it's been covered up. They in it, but they don't realize what they're in. Because all the white folks did then went from sheets to a three-piece suit. See, they don't, they don't know what they're in. They're still in, in segregation, but they, don't, said they need to go back and look at the jailhouse. And they see that they got more kids in jail than in the school system. And they black. This is the thing that happened to adverse, that the bad thing that happened to us, that Mr. White Man started down great education. And I've always said to the day, until I die, that we built America. And I want our kids to know that we got brain that white folks ain't got. White folks take our knowledge and build on it. We are the thing that, that, that they should look at, that we, that we show them. And now they're doing documentaries on them, being an inventor, pencil shop, and the corn picker, and all that stuff. We, as black got a, a wonderful mind. We could take over this country if we use our heads correctly and the right way to do it. And this is what we was fighting to bring forward for them to see from back in the ticket, that we the one invented lip gloss, our corn, and all this. But the white man got credit for it because we didn't have the uh, exposure of facilities to do it. But this, 
and they need to study us and see that this is what we brought for them. They have all these advantages now that they're not capitalizing on. Mm -hmm. 